I'm speaking from Singapore, so here we are in the heat and also uh, rather in the night. So I would like to talk to you about uh, a topic I have uh, done, uh, worked on since many years, is on social robots. So as you can see from the first images, is we came from far away to come now uh, with this human plus, which are these social robots. And what is interesting in that is it really not new. Already uh, 300 uh, years before Christus, you have Aristoteles in one of his books who wrote that he was dreaming of automaton and uh, social robot, but the terms was not adequate at the time. And he said that he would love to have them to play instruments and to do quite a lot of other actions instead of having slavery. So as we know that today we still have modern slavery is something, a, mis a message which is incredible. And over time we have Leonardo da Vinci who has designed many uh, robots, let's say automaton with mechanical devices. And of course, uh, coming originally from Switzerland, we are very happy to have our automaton from 18th century, which were absolutely fabulous, looking like real people, being able to play music, to write. And that's what I would like to tell you, is nothing in terms of idea new, but what I like to communicate with you today is where are we in our daily life with these social robots? So I like to introduce three case studies and speak also of the research linked to that. First, the first case study is a case study where we use in education and really large education, then uh, in office and insurances. And the third case study is the most recent one. I just finished uh, two weeks ago, this case study, which lasted six months in the elderly home. So coming back to the beginning of my research, I first started very early with a film with Marilyn Monroe and Humphrey Bogart in 87. It was the first time we could, we were able to clone or to make in 3D legendary stuff that met in a virtual place in a cafe in Montreal. But uh, after this, uh, starting in 2000 plus, I started with robotics. So here you see Eva, and Eva is made with David Hansen. We had a collaboration, David Hansen. Maybe you know Sophia, another very uh, famous robot. And uh, at that time, uh, he made the head and we made the software. So what was this software we made on EVA, we had in Geneva in my lab, is a software that was extremely new at that time, is to be able for EVA to show emotion, remind facts, and show an expressive uh, behavior. And then she was able to recognize people and to have natural interaction with the people. This has brought to my team and myself quite a lot of uh, very important publications. So, sorry. Not used to this. So here you will see a film with Eva with the interaction. It is a very early film, and what is interesting is, in fact, the pioneer work with a social robot. When I say social robot, is not any robot; is a robot that is able to have interaction with people and, in general, look like a person. Please, can we see the video? Eva is a socially interactive robot developed for the purpose of studying and creating technology for long-term human-robot interaction. She is equipped with several components, such as emotion and social relationship simulation, 
memory modeling, decision making and reasoning. She can remember people, their faces and past exchanges using face recognition technology and artificial intelligence algorithms. She also has human-like inspection capability with a repertoire of emotional facial expressions, blinking, idle gaze, yeah. and head animation. I always ask a quiz in this particular example, Eva is a tutor you, of digital uh, photography. Would you care to suggest one? Yeah. Something that you wouldn't know name? if you've looked My at name the, is Marlene. the talk. So, your name is Marlene? Yes. We are going to have four classes together. At each class, I will teach you the concepts and ask you questions to see your progress. We will start with camera exposure. Based on her initial personality, Eva can motivate the users, encourage them when they make mistakes, and congratulate them when they are successful. By using empathic phrases and facial expressions, she aims to create self-awareness in users in order to improve their learning experience. Hi Marlene, great to see you again. Are you ready for today's course? I remember you did great last time. What do you think? Oh, it was fun. Great to hear that. As you remember, I asked you what exposure is and you answered that correctly, Marlene. Yes. In today's course, we will go in details of exposure settings. Let's start with shutter speed. Can you tell me what is it? The instructions on the screen may help you. Controls the duration of the exposure. Yes, well done. You are doing very good, Marlene. Eva can have multiple interactions with people over extended periods of time. She can remember her particular relationship with each user and pass knowledge about them, such as their feelings and their multiple level with respect to the pedagogical goals of the course. Our research with multiple users show that Eva has proven to be a good platform for studying long-term interaction and let us gain fruitful insights for everyday use of social robots for entertainment and education. So some most advanced humanoid robots on the world looking like real person are shown on the top. The two ones are more uh, Japanese robots and the last one is Sophia, which is done in fact in Hong Kong, but let's say David Hansen is American. And below you have also very capable robots, very well-known robots. Uh, at last, it can run Asimo, who was one of the early robots, and Pepper, which is the commercial one. Of course, they don't have the same, let's say, appearance, but at least uh, they are part of these well-known robots. Now, I introduce you to our robot, Nadine, and it is a new robot uh, in NTU in Singapore. We have brought, and as you can see, uh, the entire of Nadine. So for me, Nadine is important in my philosophy that if we have to have a companion to help us in different ways, as we can see in the case study, it should look like a real person. Okay, if we look how is the research done on that, my whole research over my life has been mostly on the virtual human, as you can see below the picture on the right side of Nadine. And uh, that's quite a lot of the research to be done because you have somebody talking to a virtual one or Nadine. And in the social robot, for example, the camera and the sensors, the microphone uh, are able to track all kinds of data. And from that on, in the box of processing and decision, we have different models of emotion, memory, social attention, and the chat box. And in all in these models, we can work and develop more uh, with AI, as you have uh, heard in this conference before. So a lot of AI, a lot of graphics and uh, psychological models have been added. And in the action box is how the robot has to behave according to a situation. 
uh, that's a description of this platform uh, wherever you are interested. Now, what we're working on actually, and what social robots need to be improved, is when you have a social robot, uh, they can recognize people, they can eventually grasp objects, but even that, it should be always specific. So what happens if there are multiple people, if there are multiple decors, uh, what can a social robot that do? And now this research is going on. So we have uh, just a researcher, like PhD students who work on 3D hand pose estimation using synthetic data and weekly labeled RGB images. As I said, we use a lot of machine learning methods and also we work on engagement intention that means that every human when we like to do something we have an engagement intention so how do we model this in a robot so that's quite a lot of things to be worked on and i think this topic will last for years now, if you can see here, we come with the first example I would like to show you. I spoke to show three concrete examples. So we were invited to bring Nadine in, uh, in the Art Science Museum in Singapore. So it is a very broad public. It was more than 100,000 people who came to dialogue freely with her, either in English or in Chinese and she was able to answer most of the question or otherwise she said i don't know so well so sorry <laughs> well i will go back i have a bit of so here you see i will show you a film on nadine and you will see how it was in the uh, Art Science Museum. Please, can you show the film? What is your nationality? I do not have any nationality. I am a global person. Do you have feelings? I am programmed to simulate a full range of human emotions. What is the weather today? There will be scattered thunderstorms in downtown court today with a forecast of high of 86 and a low of 78. It's currently 83 and mostly cloudy. Thank you for the conversation. It's been a pleasure to be in your company. Bye-bye then. See you later, my friend. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. So here you see an image of a visitor that came to NTU, it's Prime Minister Modi, and this experience was extremely important because it's also very broad international education. And Prime Minister Modi was able to discover Nadine who spoke to him in Hindi in a very freely mode. So let's see the demo, uh, the film about Modi presentation. engagements lined up it's also what we hear a very tightly packed schedule uh, of his visit to singapore the prime minister there interacting with the robot is that the robot yes it is the robot at the nanyang uh, technical university it's quite an interesting experience for the prime minister as well who has uh, already met with the country's top officials including the singaporean president and also his singaporean 
counterpart Lee Sign Lung and uh, what's expected is a number of memorandum of understandings being signed between the two leaders of Singapore and India. These are the live shots uh, that we are getting of the Prime Minister interacting with the robot and a very enriching, exciting experience. The Prime Minister would come back with uh, a lot of uh, experiences to share as well. And as I said, he's going to be delivering the keynote address of the Shangri-La Dialogue, which is also the first time that an Indian Prime Minister is going to be addressing an event. The Prime Minister is on the last leg of his Three Nation Tour. Uh, he even also addressed, uh, uh, Madhav, uh, after ar arriving in the Singapore, uh, arriving in Singapore, he addressed the Indian diaspora at the business community event at the famed Marine. Now I would like to speak about the second case study. So we have seen in the previous one that a social robots can bring broader education to understand what they can do. And in this second example, what we can see is a social robot can be sitting at an entrance in an office or in a bank in an insurance. And what they can do, they can send SMS, answer the phone, uh, electronic phone, and they can do small things. If they have hands, they can eventually uh, give objects or documents. So this is all kind of things they can do as receptionist. So let's have a look at the next uh, concrete case. We have brought uh, our social robot Nadine in collaboration with AIA Insurance. Uh, this is a very broad, uh, well-known insurance in Asia. And AIA was interested to bring social robots because at peak hours, they have the, social, the real agents have so much to do that they like to see if they can get some help. And Nadine was brought and trained to that. And she was able to answer many questions usually asked to AIA uh, agents. And also she was able to give information about new sign up in insurance policies. So she was there about six months and we have written case studies. And in fact, the results were extremely positive uh, as uh, she could really help from 11 to 2 o'clock to answer customers' needs. Let's have a look at AIA insurance company uh, with Nadine working as customer agent. So here we come to our last, last, last case study. And this last case study is particular in the sense that uh, we have brought Nadine to an elderly home in Singapore. And of course, during COVID was not possible to make any experience, but we were lucky in Singapore to have for several months almost zero case here. And due to that, for six months, 
Nadine was brought there and most of it, she was doing three things. One is to make bingo games. The, with the, so she was leading the games. The second thing was she offered direct discussion with anyone who likes to come and talk to her. And uh, in fact, the third thing people could ask, can you show me images or can you uh, play music for me? And the installation is such that there were screens in the room so everybody could come in this world to hear uh, or to discuss with Nadine. So this is one of the world first experience with the social robots in a place. So we got uh, for several months discussion with the RIB, uh, the ethical committee in NTU and in Singapore. So after filling all the norms of the ethical committee, we were able to board Nadine. And I must say that the response was very positive. First of all, when they do bingo, if it's a real person, she has to go with a, a sign and go through and it's not everybody can see and she has to shout. When it is Nadine, she can repeat and there are many screens where they see the results. The second thing is several elderly, these people are mild dement. So several elderly were able to come to Nadine and discuss privately. I don't have the time in this uh, short presentation to show you some interviews we have with them, but it was very interesting that they had a companion to speak with because nowhere on the planet uh, we can have one person for one elderly. And sometimes elderly, all study shows it, uh, we show this phenomena is that uh, we, we need more attention and more discussion. And if you are even alone at home, it's not so nice to speak with the walls. So here they could discuss with Nadine, she could remember what she knows or what was said with a specific person and she could reply. So I would like to show you this film. This study finished very recently uh, because we just got COVID cases again in Singapore. But let's say uh, she has, Nadine has stayed six months in Singapore, but it was absolutely a very interesting uh, experience and we are writing a few papers on that. So we can see the video now. Morning, Chai. Can I ask you, uh, having a robot like Nadine, uh, how does it help our residents in the nursing home? From my observation, I, uh, the resident is more focused and they are enjoying. Over the time, they remember what is the uh, routine of the bingo game with Nadine, uh, which is they looking forward every week. <laughs> Hello, how old 
very clear. Jenny, how many brothers and sisters you have? I have two brothers and my sisters. They're lucky to have a sibling like you. Yeah. She asks people questions, understand people, and then she can sing songs, play songs, and play clever. We, what are the needs of the elderly uh, in an elderly home? Can a social robot like Nadine help in something? I will say as a therapist, I totally see that the use of Nadine, the humanoid robot, has helped to improve the cognitive function. It helps them to improve in their attention and their memory. And we see it in this study. And now that Nadine is going back, the residents are also preparing to send her off and they're asking, hey, where is Nadine going back to? Where is her home? And I think that typically shows how this is a very well-adjusted interaction between humans and actually a humanoid. Tender and kind Built over time, this is my love for you. Steady and pure, patient and sure. A metallic robot can never replace Nadine, and we really look forward to see her coming back in the new home. So shout from the city gates, he having blessed his day. That all the elders say. This love was worth the way. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm looking to hear uh, questions. Thank you.